and welcome to today's video. So it's early November and I've just received a parcel and it's a parcel full of cactus plants. So let's get unboxing. So here they all are. There's 10 cactus plants here. I think I've only bought nine, so I'm not sure whether one of them's just been popped in as a freebie. So you might have guessed that they are all Gymnocalyceum cactus plants. It was a job lot bundle that I bought. The diameter of all the cactus plants are between 3.5 to 5 centimetres and the identifications are unknown and the spines of Gymnocalyceum are highly variable amongst species and varieties. Skin dimples at and around the areoles might not be present in younger specimens and only appear at maturity. So this one looks a bit similar to the first one so you can see how this type of Gymnocalyceum can be quite confusing because they tend to look the same. So this one's rather different to the first two, it's quite obvious here with the way it looks. Wow, so this one's got very beautiful spines. So this is more of a distinctive looking cactus and I probably think would be an easier one to identify. Wow, this one's got lots of little offsets going around the sides. This one's beautiful, it's got really gingery red spines. This one's probably in the species of Bruchii, and they tend to have that rather distinctive look. So this looks similar in appearance to the first two cactus and has a rather generic look to it. So we have four left to do. So this one looks very similar to a Gymnocalyceum stellatum v obductum, which I already have in my cactus collection. I think this one has a red spider mite. If you look very closely at the base of the cactus, you might be able to see a red dot. Just had a close look and it seems to be moving. So I can see a few other red spider mites walking about. So. I'll keep this one separate and wash this one. Hopefully catch it in time before it does any real damage. So I've put the cactus into a suitable tub. Already put some dishwashing liquid in there. Then I'll add a drop of cinnamon oil. I've filled it up with some water so the cactus is in there. So that helps soften up the soil so I can loosen the root ball as well. So that'll just be a nice bath to get rid of the spider mites. And then once I've left it in here to soak, I will rinse it under the tap. And then dry off the roots with a towel. And then pot it straight up into dry potting mix. And don't give it any more water. So I'll keep that to one side in case I come across any others here. With any... um spider mites on because they've been in the same box. So let's check this next one. So I'll just give this a quick inspection. So this one has a red spider mite as well. You can just about see one there. That reddish colour. It's quite a big one actually. So sorry Mr Cactus, into the bath you shall go. So there's two more left to do now. Wow, that's pretty. 
probably an easier one to identify. These are my favourite colours in cactus. This one has a thick root system. It looks a little bit cramped and restricted. So I'll put this into a deeper pot. Cactus plants with this kind of coloration are very used to being exposed to all day maximum sunlight. So I've had a quick check of the roots and I'm going to pop this one into my water bath as well. Just to be on the safe side, I saw a little bit of white stuff in there. Didn't like the look of it in case it was a mealy bug. Right, so this is the last one. So this one seems to have quite a distinctive look, including the spines. So this is another beautiful cactus. It's got one of those nice grey to bluey coloured bodies, a bit similar to the other one. If you look at this one, look how coiled up and twisted that root is there. Look at the root there, the way it twists up in itself. So really that needs a deeper pot. That's what's caused that, the pot's too short. And over time it's just squashed itself. A little bit dehydrated. Showing signs of normal shrinkage for this time of year. In a previously well watered cactus prior to dormancy, it will have enough water reserves until next spring. So there's the odd scarring there, but it's not too bad. Overall, it's a healthy looking cactus. I decided to wash these cactus plants in the water mixture as well, just to make sure they were bug and pest free, as opposed to just raking off the dry soil. So here are the cactus plants after they've been soaked thoroughly in the water mixture and they've spent about 10 to 15 minutes soaking so I've already started to remove the soil and I just want to show you in a bit more detail the look of the actual taproot now it's free of soil so as I've been washing off the soil you can now see how much the root has twisted and turned so if I can just quickly show you it's now much easier to move the root you can see how badly that's coiled up on itself. That should be long and straight. It's a lot straighter than it is at the moment anyway. Now the cactus plants are fully washed and rinsed, we can see the roots more clearly. We have carrot-like roots, fibrous roots and the more thicker tap-rooted cactus. Tap-rooted cactus are extremely rot-prone and do require very careful watering because they hold the majority of their water in their root. So a taproot holds on to all this water and only releases it in great times of need. So you have to be careful how much you water and when you water. If you give too much water or at the wrong time, it will be so overwhelmed it will rot in days. So just as important is my choice of pot. It's not going to be wider in diameter, it's going to be just big enough to fit around the cactus body, but the length of the pot is going to be deep enough to accommodate the actual root itself. So if you look at the two cactus plants shown on the left and compare it to the cactus to the right, you can see they have a more fibrous root system, so can be put into shallower pots. So this is the rest of the cactus plants, now bare-rooted, and they're still wet, so I'll pat them dry. These two here are very similar, but are different. This one here's got quite a small root system, a bit stumpy. So this one here's got an interesting root, it's got two sections to it. So this is one of my favourites because it has all of these offsets around the sides and a lot of them have their own roots that are developing already. But I'm going to leave them on the plant. Removing them when they're smaller can mean they will grow more slowly than if I just left them on the parent plant. It's best to let them get a bit bigger and then I'll repot them, especially ones without roots. 
So there's one of the babies there. You can see its long little root coming off. What you can also see more clearly now is that orangey patch on the skin is from spider mite damage. So if I just pull away at some of these babies you can see how it's also on the mother plant as well. So I'll be giving this an extra spray when I pot it up just to be on the safe side because I just want to be sure that they've all gone. But usually running them off in the water gets rid of all the mites. So there you can see some really tiny little new babies starting to grow. Then the last three at the bottom. So this one's got a nice tap root. This one's got a really nice root system, really fibrous there. And this one's like a carroty tap root. So I really like this one, I really like the colour of the spines. When you turn it at certain angles, they're really vibrant red. So what's really nice about washing your cactus plants when you receive them from any seller is they always look nice and shiny and green. Once you get rid of all the dust, they just look so much better. So do remember, if you are doing this sort of procedure of getting your plants wet during the dormant season, because at the moment here in the UK it's November and the cactus plants are now relatively sleeping, do make sure that you don't leave the cactus plant soaking wet and that you do thoroughly dry it off. So all the cactus plants have been potted in exactly the same way as you see here. And I've made allowance for the root growth and I've used taller clay pots where necessary. And I top dressed with some Kyadama. So if you don't want to miss any of my videos, consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching. Bye.